Craziest body cam moments of all time. Hold some of the most horrifying, saddening, and life-changing moments in history. So here are nine of the craziest body cam moments of all time. Starting off with this case from the Douglas County Sheriff's Office in Colorado, which released footage of an officer involved in an unexpected shooting on May 13th, 2007. Can I show this? Okay, I think it's fine. Traffic stop ended up- I don't know, chat unfolding as one of the most distressing moments of this officer's career. People are naked on Twitch? Yeah, but they might shoot at each other in this video. I don't know. It all seems like a normal traffic stop, but when the cop walks to the other side of the car, the unexpected occurs. 215 shots fired! 215 okay, shots they jump, fired! They jump cut, they jump cut, they jump cut. Dude, he whipped out a f assault rifle. Who the hell carries an AR in their f car? 215 shots fired! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Don't move! I'm gonna say this. If this guy died, not the cop's fault. If you get out of your car at a traffic stop holding an assault rifle and you get shot in the f head, that's on you, right? Like, you're, you, that's on you, right? I think any logical person, there are many scenarios where cops make f terrible mistakes or, or they abuse their power and they kill people that they shouldn't. But if you pull, if I'm a cop and I pull somebody over, and I'm walking up to their car, and they step out of the car with a gun, and you kill them, not your fault. Like, he is doing him a service by not killing him here. The suspect runs towards him with a rifle in his hand, and it's here when the officer quickly responds by firing his gun, causing the suspect to run away in fear. What did he think was gonna happen? He was gonna, he was gonna hit, he was gonna fucking uh, blunt hit the police officer, kill him, and then get back in his car? King 15. King 15. I'm okay. Start medical for a subject with a bleeding arm. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Managing to get the and sus- he's crying now. Dude, he probably got pulled over for speeding. <laughs> I just, so, officer, I just wanted to let you know that your tail light's out. <laughs> he didn't even do anything wrong. Officer, I just- uh, or, Not officer. Uh, yeah, sure. I just wanted to let you know that your your back your back brake light doesn't work. Back to drop the gun. The officer held the suspect at gunpoint until backup officers and EMS arrived on the scene. The suspect was finally arrested, and the officer is fine. It is absolutely incredible to hear the fear in his voice and how this changed throughout due to adrenaline, barely being able to speak. K15 shots fired. K15 shots fired. Get on the ground. Get on the ground. Fear is arguably the most important- We're not gonna have any more info on that scenario? Are all of these just gonna get cut? Bro, I wanna know what the fuck happened. Why did that guy get out of the car and fucking try and kill him? This is a W video? That's insane. Like, I, I, like, I want to know why. Fear is also what enabled Officer Brianna Tedesco to beg for her life after a fugitive pulled out his gun on her. <laughs> This terrifying ordeal. Oh my god. Chat, this is the most, this is the, this is like the craziest fucking video I've ever seen. Who the fuck recommended this? Started as Officer Brianna Tedesco walked up to a suspect's car, which had out-of-state plates, while a second officer waited in the car. Officer Tedesco questions the man who claimed to be taking a nap. Hi. Good, how are you? What are you doing parked back here? Am I wrong in saying these people gotta be on drugs? That or like they're a wanted fucking, they're like a wanted felon. Surely. Have you been here? Not a big deal. I just have to make sure, you know, you don't have any warrants or anything, which I'm sure you don't. Once I confirm that, you'll be on your way. No big deal. D-U-N-K-I-N. The suspect seems nervous as he fidgets around for his driver's license and eventually tells the officer that he doesn't have a license. What Officer Tedesco didn't know is that the suspect is a fugitive who's wanted yeah, okay. 
for murder. The suspect then gives Officer Tedesco a fake name for the record, Jake Duncans. So you said your name was James, right? So how come they can't find you out of Pennsylvania? They're not finding a DL, a uh, driver's license record for James Duncan. Do you have anything in the vehicle with your name on it? King Henry Lincoln 4596. In a matter of seconds, as Officer Tedesco continues questioning him, I'm calling back up the second this motherfucker is acting like this. The suspect pulls out a gun on her. Reacting quickly, the officer grabs a hold of the gun, begging the suspect not to shoot her. No! 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 I'll leave! I'll leave! Okay, I'll leave! No! No! Let go! Hey, no! Don't touch me! Don't touch me! No! 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 Please! 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 No! No! Oh my god, dude. This is insane. No! 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 What the fuck is Paul Blart doing running over? Whip out the fucking gun. What the fuck is this motherfucker doing? Buddy's jogging over. Buddy's fucking jogging over, pal. Whip out the fucking wham cannon and shoot him in the head through the fucking glass. Oh my god. And now he's taking out the- I swear to God if that's a taser. The backup officer, who's noticed what was happening, runs towards the car with his own weapon, eventually shooting the suspect. There we go. And freeing Officer Tedesco, the suspect was identified to be Kenneth Martell, who was wanted in Pennsylvania for the home invasion and murder of an 88-year-old Theodore Garver. Martell has now met his own violent end. Quick reflexes can save lives, which is exactly what happened in this case, where officers pulled a man out of a burning... Damn, so they killed him? Yeah, no, I, that is fucking terrifying, though. That was honestly terrifying. Poor Theodore. Yeah, why'd he kill the 80-year-old man? It exploded. On May 24th, 2021, Austin police officers received reports of a burning vehicle completely engulfed in flames and fumes with a patient trapped inside. Knowing that the clock's ticking on the explosion of the vehicle, the officers rushed to it to perform an amazing feat and everything was caught by their body cams. Get that extinguisher. Wow. He's in the car? Hey, man. I'm gonna open the door from the other side, yeah. Come on, come on. Hit it, hit it. Doesn't... Come on, man. Did they crash? What happened? Come on, come on. Hit it, hit it. Doesn't. Come on, Mike. Come on. Come on. The car come exploded? How did the car just quick. explode? Come on. Come He's still on. alive. Come on. Come on. Come on. He, like, doesn't want to get out. Pull, 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 pull. Come on. Turn him over. He's having a seizure. Oh, he's pull, having pull. a seizure? We got one now. He's All having right. a seizure. Right. We need to be missing. 1018. That's hot. Get out. Get out. There's somebody else in there? Oh, this is the other oh, this is the other uh view. Come on. Oh, he's having a seizure. Oh, four, we got one now. He's All right. having a seizure. Right. We need to be missing. Hey. Using a baton to break the window of the driver's seat and touching the burning vehicle with his bare hands, the officer heroically manages to pull the driver out of the vehicle. The officers manage to drag the seizing victim to safety as the truck explodes just mere seconds after pulling him out. Hey, help me pull him over there. We'll get away from the fire. We have gotta back the fuck up. That thing is burning. Where the hell 
is the fire truck? Yeah. You're okay. Okay, buddy? You're okay. You're good. You're good. You're good. Get away from it. It's not going to do nothing. That's not going to do away. nothing. It's not going to help. Stay away. Over here. Get over there. Over there. The victim is known to have made a full recovery. No, don't yell at the man with the fire extinguisher. He's just walking out trying to help. He's trying to he walking out trying to help. They're like, they're like, no, that's not gonna do shit. Fuck it. Hey, get get back in your house. <laughs> get back in your house. <laughs> he whipped out the little mini one that you'd have under your sink. The officers Pineda and Carrera received a chief's coin of recognition for their heroic actions, but things still get even crazier. On April 2nd, 2022, Trooper Brack Miller, who was on the lookout for an armed robbery suspect, spotted the vehicle in Canadian County and attempted to pull the driver over. 32-year-old suspect Charles Carswell refused to stop and led the trooper on a high-speed chase, during which- Yo, I don't wanna- I- I don't- support this but i love watching high speed chases not car chases motorcycle like you ever see you ever see a like a motorcycle cop chase in cities like in like different countries not like i don't know if it'd be like brazil but like somewhere where it's like yeah like this this shit where they're like chasing him dude they're chasing him through the fucking roads. They end up going somewhere in like, like through backyards and shit. Like this. Like they're just riding in random alleyways, just chasing each other. That's staged. This is definitely not staged because they crash right here. You like watching this shit's entertaining. Passing 10th nearly struck a post CPD motorcycle officer on the inside shoulder. If I'm a cop too, I'm worried people don't pull over. You know how when you're when a cop has their lights on and they're supposed to, like you're supposed to move out of their fucking way? I'll be driving and that'll happen and people don't move. Like there's a lot of people that don't move. And so they could just run into them. Like it's not uncommon that an that an ambulance or somebody with like sirens will just run into somebody that didn't yield. Okay. Nine fifty city shots fired. They shot one through the back window. Shot one through the back window. You're still pursuing. <laughs> You're still pursuing. He's getting shot at. I'm gonna be driving the car like this. Fucking uh, hide behind the wheel. He still got good posture. Still pointing the gun. Still pointing the gun. Yeah, hit him with it. Hit him with it. Do the side slam like you're in a fucking GTA race. How is he not worried? How is he how is he not worried? They're actively shooting at him and he's just <laughs> just like like an NPC just unfazed. Ooh, that was ugly. The pursuit Ooh, woo, that was ugly. <laughs> continued for a bit longer and Trooper Miller's incredible. Oh, he got bulletproof glass. Oh shit. Yo, do all cop cars have bulletproof glass? That would make sense. Oh, yo, they got bulletproof glass. I'm going 180 miles an hour into the back of his car. And professionalism just kept shining. Eventually, Trooper Miller was able to tack- Nah, that shit is cracked. That is not bulletproof. Tactically ram Charles's vehicle. It looks flimsy. In the pursuit. So yeah, taking one round through the front windshield. He's, he's still continuing to fire. Hit him! Hit him! You gotta commit to that. You gotta commit to that. You gotta commit to that ram. Yeah. 
Right there. Right there. Right there. Yup. Flip the car. TBI, TBI, TBI. Another job. Another job done. Over. Another day for the OGs. Over. If the car just fucking starts going to a random tumble, just fucking nails a tree, explodes on impact. For Trooper Miller, it was just another Saturday. Charles was eventually shot down following the incident, but it isn't always the case that pit maneuvers have resulted in a successful capture of a suspect. For in the next one, both the officer and the suspect sustain injuries, but they gave us one of the most incredible police pursuit moments you will ever see. Yeah, that's a, that's a commit. Nah, that's a commit, though. That's a GTA fucking spin. That's me in a NASCAR game just fucking everybody over. Holy shit. On April 10th, 2020, Arkansas State Police were dis- Right, I don't know if I'd be doing all that. <laughs> you might die in a car crash. In this scenario, do you, do they think they're getting out of it? I always wonder that. Like, do they think? Cause like, I not in this car. If I was driving like a Lambo, I might I might be like, I'll get away, or a motorcycle. But you're in a fucking Ford F one fifty. You are not outrunning a fucking supercharged or not a supercharged a turboed fucking Ford. That's a Ram fifteen hundred, brother. Oops. Oops, sorry. Honest mistake. Honest mistake, sir. My apologies. My apologies, sir. I did not know that was a Ram 1500. I thought it was a Ford F-150. My apologies. My apologies. Oh, now I more clearly see the Ram logo. You are right. You can tell by the trim that this is a Ram. Nice car. Trooper Sean Ellis began pursuing the vehicle when it began crossing into traffic lanes, meeting traffic at a high rate of speed. Noticing Justin's extreme and reckless driving and his disregard for the- Hitting that Ford Glad- or not Ford Gladiator- that hitting that Jeep Gladiator would have been a fucking death sentence on the insurance. That car's expensive as shit. ...by officers to collide their patrol cars with the suspect's vehicle in a bid to try and stop them. <laughs> Oh, this is about to be insane. Oh my god! He caught air! He caught air! That was like a fucking ramp! That, that is literally 20 feet in the air. Wow. Uh, go ahead and start EMS. That guy must be dead. That, that, guy, that guy must be dead. Not only did the police car go above and beyond the call of duty, he almost went to infinity and beyond. This was GTA, your car would just have like a little scratch on it. You just keep driving. When Trooper Ellis had executed the pit maneuver at 109 miles per hour, That's resulting insane. in both the vehicles overturning. It is honestly incredible to see how far some people will go for the dumbest of reasons. Both Justin and Trooper Ellis sustained major injuries in the incident, which could have been avoided if the trooper had decided not to perform the pit maneuver at such a dangerous speed. The last nah, but that's so badass, though. Nah, nah, but that's so badass, though. You're going 110, and you're like, fuck it. And you just ram right into him. ...thing you'd expect to see on a traffic stop is an overdosed suspect, but not the least. On October 13th, 2018, a Columbus police officer initiated a traffic stop after noticing a suspected drunk driver swerving on the streets. Uh oh, I was just a bit tired, so I pulled over for some second I'm just a little bit EP, so I had to pull over. I started falling asleep at the wheel. Let's just say, I had a rough day. Okay. You haven't been drinking? No. No, no. I do not. No drugs? No. When confronted, the suspect seemed disoriented and claimed to just feel tired after a long night of watching over his kid. But as we'll see later, that's very far from the truth. Yeah, right. You're having a hard time keeping your eyes open, man. When's the last time you slept? Mm, it's been about a day and a half, two days. Two days.
days without sleeping? What's the longest y'all ever gone without sleeping? Maybe a day. Hey. Yes. Why haven't you slept in a day and a half? Uh, I just have a kid. You so have a kid? You. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you sure you haven't taken any drugs? Yes, I am. Are you I lying mean, to me? I have in the past. But not today? You, you can, hey, you're nah, falling he's asleep. Deaf on the, he's deaf on the fucking perks or some shit. You're falling asleep at the wheel, like talking to a cop. Talking to me, man. I'm falling asleep. I'm just stressed. He's a pothead. Weed will not do that. Are you... If he was hot, if he was that high, his eyes would be fucking blood red. Now about 20 minutes ago, neighbor called. Yeah, he's just a little EP, bro. Let him take a nap. Green, no black 29, vandalized his truck. No black white jacket, no black gray jacket, no description on the third. They also caught running in the alley between the two. What? I can't hear you. Oh, I apologize. You're what? What? <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying to me? I can't hear are you. you talking to me? Yes, I'm talking to you. Do me a favor, put get the keys out of the ignition. Turn your car off. I I'm I'm really not worried that he's gonna pull away here if I'm the cop. I don't even think I don't even think he knows how to fucking operate a vehicle right now. Oh. Put the keys on the roof. Yep. Alright, stay put. What happens next would shock both you and the officer conducting the stop. Oh, do they OD? As the officer went back to check up on the man, he had overdosed. Seeing this, the officer immediately calls for EMS. Luckily, EMS arrive on the scene quickly and are able to rescue the suspect. So we were driving, just trying to get back to 19, and he's all over the road. He pulled in here. He gave me some story about how he was tired. I don't have his name or anything. No. You think he was on? We've given him two doses. So he looked away for five seconds? Well, that's how fast it happens. Like, he's not gonna die. It's just like he, right, like literally he's he's so fucking high on whatever it is. Not even within the last minute. Fentanyl? No. I would probably say like Xan, yeah, I was gonna say like some type of pill, like Xanax. milligrams of Narcan woke you up. Why did he drive? Uh, Grant, what's, good? what's your name? The man was later identified to be 23-year-old Ryan Woolen. The amount of medication that was required to revive him was a shocking 8 milligrams of Narcan. It is a miracle that he was pulled over right at that time. I just hope for his sake that he made a full recovery. He just seemed like a really nice guy having some trouble. But it's not always a good ending for some suspects, or even officers in this case. On September 25th, 2020, Metropolitan Police officers stopped a man in Norbury, South London, as they suspected him to be oh the old London oh now we now we now we're getting on the boat going over another another choose another Tuesday pullover be connected to the string of robberies that had occurred in the area police however would soon discover that the suspect oh, had a shit is this guy a fucking is this guy like a murderer a lot of burglars in this area and I've just seen God, British people have such cool accents dude I know I make fun of it but I I, I would rather I would rather have an Australian accent than a British accent I would rather have an Australian accent than a British accent, and then probably what I sound like right now. Take it and have a look in a minute, all right? The reason is there's a lot of burglaries in this area, okay? It's half one in the morning. I don't know who you are. You've probably got a totally legitimate excuse, all right? But at the moment, you're walking down the road with a duffel bag, all right? Which I, which I believe may have stuff going to equip to do a burglary, all right? So I'm just going to search you. This pocket, I've got my ID. Perfect. Okay, that's fine. Don't don't put your hands in your pockets. Hey, hello. Don't put your hands in your pockets. Okay. You okay? You're just gonna be searched, mate. You're not under arrest. I just need to search you. You okay? 
All right. Him just him wearing the trench coat would make me so nervous, though. Because, like, he could have, like, a machete just, like, sitting in his person. Nervous, yeah? Okay. Are they expecting you home? Okay, that's fine. All right. That's fine. Give me two seconds. Give me two seconds. Do you want me to hold that? Sorry, right. you're not in trouble. You're not in trouble. Oh, they're being so nice. Oh, they're being so nice. The man was identified to be 23-year-old Louis de Zoysa. He had been wearing a black mask and carrying a duffel bag after being asked by the police if they could perform a search of his bag in order to clear him. The suspect, who's extremely nervous and shaken, confesses to having something in his bag. Oh my god, is it gonna be a dead body? <gasps> what would it fit? It's gonna be like a head or something. I'm, I'm going to confess, okay? In that bag um, is uh, non medical. Uh, Louis had been. Weed? Bitch. <laughs> but he's tweaking about. All right, I have non-medical cannabis. Bitch, I would have said, yeah, there's weed in the bag. That bag is full of weed. Boring. Have, have a human hand in the bag. Or <laughs> something been on the way to visit his parents before he had been caught by the police. After further investigation, Louis was found to have been an avid drug user for four years and allegedly was on the autistic spectrum. Then during the search, Louis had a very odd request. Okay, how much have you got in there? I've got maybe three or so. He has an eighth of, I swear to you, he has an eighth of weed and they're about to fucking bug out on this man. Nah, this has to take a turn for the worse, and he fucking stabs them. All right, I'm still gonna have to search you. All right, yeah. so just pass me your phone and your mask, okay? All right, my... He's gonna stab him or something. My concern is at the moment is if you've got anything on that's gonna hurt me or you, any needles, any razor blades, anything like that. Okay, fine. Because you just told me you've got drugs on you, I'm just gonna have to put you in handcuffs while I search you. The reason, what's the matter? So the reason for that is people try and do silly things when we search them. They try and hurt themselves. They try and hurt police officers. Hey, All right. Can you take me into the car, please? Why? Don't resist. Listen to me very carefully. I know, I know. Don't resist. Okay, we'll put you in the car, but put the yeah. first, yeah? Okay. Is it someone's watching us? Or? Yeah, let me take, take the bag, please. Thank you. Why do you want us to sit you in the car? Just very please. Why? Oh my god, is somebody like after him or some shit? Just, just. You think your parents might see? No. Um. Once in the car, Lewis reaches for his pockets as if to hide something, despite being asked by the officers to not do so. The officers aren't oblivious to his actions and decide to search Lewis to make an astounding discovery. Okay, so I asked you earlier. I'm not. I'm not too sure what the answer was. Have you got anything on you, like sharp, that can hurt me or and you? And you have a nick vape. Imagine he just pulls out like a nicotine vape. No. no. Oh God. Some crazy shit's about to happen. What is it? 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 Yeah, canisters. Oh. Oh. Right. At the moment, I'm right. placing you under arrest. Okay. For possession of what I believe to be bullets. The officers then place Lewis under arrest after finding what they believed to be bullets. He soon transported to Croydon Police Station to be processed. I am I wrong in saying, isn't it really hard to get a gun in the UK too, comparably to the US? Like, you find bullets on somebody in the US, that's not that insane. But, like, in the UK, like, there most cops don't even have guns. You have to be like, there's like a certain type of officer in the UK that's like allowed to carry a weapon. Assessed and questioned yeah. further. What follows next should have never even been a thing, but sadly, it is. Uh, okay. okay, hold up. I feel like I should scan this. I feel like somebody's about to die. Okay, no. Uh, possession of a firearm, aka a bag of uh, what looked like bullets. Uh, possession yes. of a defense supply, class B. Who is the other unit? So you're probably only for the switch. Yes. Oh, okay. Right, yeah. this is but this will pop one and the other, don't take the cuffs off. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Stand up, mate. He's been a bit. Go on. 
Uh, okay, listen to me. My name's Matt, I'm the custody officer. I'm in charge. I'm not involved in the investigation. You've been arrested on suspicion of possession of bullets, uh, ammunition, and possession of intent to supply. Class B. Class B, anything else? No, it's it. All right, your detention's not been authorised yet, but I can authorise a search of you under section 54 of PACE. Stand up. Mate, you're good enough to... After being led into a cell, Lewis, who had managed to sneak in a revolver hidden in his coat, opened fire, killing custody sergeant Matt Ratana. Lewis fired no less than four shots towards the sergeant, one of them bouncing back to hit Lewis himself. It baffles me as to how officers could have possibly missed a foot-long gun during the search of someone who's possessing bullets. Lewis was sentenced to life in prison for his crimes after his recovery. If you enjoyed this video, watch this one, and don't forget to subscribe. What the fuck? How did they not find a fucking revolver? I feel like it's because it's also just not as common. Like, if you're in the U.S., bro, there's states where you can walk into, like, a Walmart holding a fucking a, a, a hunting rifle. So, find, so knowing, like, I mean, I don't know. I feel like even in the U.K., like, you find somebody with bullets. It's like, damn, dude, do they have a gun? But they searched him. He also was wearing, like, four fucking sets of clothing. Why did he even have a gun on him? I, was he the guy that was robbing places? That is insane. That was such a good video, though. <gasps> Holy shit.